Hello and welcome to Dream Team Coach TV brought to you by Betway. I'm Sean Burke, joining me is Andy Taylor, Nick Elliott and a very special guest. He's a former Man City, Everton and Aston Villa defender, a PFA Team of the Year member and a former Republic of Ireland international. Richard Dunn, thank you very much for joining us today. Thank you. It's nice to not be outnumbered for once by... <laughs> no QPR, no QPR on that intro either. God, we've, all, we've only got so much time. <laughs> <laughs> Coming up on this week's show. Pick the right shoes for this? Absolutely not. <laughs> <laughs> Hell of a match up there, isn't it? Keane v Mick McCarthy. Jesus. I, know, I, did, I can't really imagine what that's like, seeing them two square off each other. Jesus. I felt like I was in a nightclub, though. Yeah. All the lights and the, and the dance floor and everything. So yeah. it was hard. Robbie Keane or Damien Duff or someone else had it done something like that at the other end. They'd be a god in Tops Ireland. Off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so it's, yeah, yeah, yeah. it's one of those things. Penalties seem to be all the rage these days, with refs dishing out pens like a big ref on his last day. There have been 35 penalties already this season, more than a third than there were over the entirety of last season. Uh, Richard, are you glad you retired when you did? Because it doesn't seem like a great time to be a defender right now. It's definitely difficult. It's, uh, <laughs> The most difficult thing is understanding some of the decisions because you can go for a, th uh, a challenge, a header, a tackle, wherever, win the ball and still be a penalty because you've not won it cleanly enough. You know, it's uh, it's so frustrating. I think for, for any of the managers, defenders watching the game, they're just like, well done. Oh no, not well done. It's a penalty now. Yeah. So, and it's, it's, it's hard and you throw in the offside rules and stuff like that. It's all got very complicated. And I, I could notice a trend of even players just with their hands noticeably behind their back more often? Like, I mean, what would you do if you were still playing today, like to, to battle this, this scenario? <laughs> more and more it goes to a non-contact sport. Mm -hmm. Certainly people, you'll, you'll see a lot of fouls outside the box now because they don't want the risk of getting anywhere near a box because if, if you brush off someone and they go down, well then on the, on the video it looks, well you've touched them, so it's a penalty. This was supposed to clear everything up, <laughs> you know, and it's not, it's well, made things worse. and. Some of the offside stuff, some of the penalties. They're just shifting the responsibility from the ref on the pitch to someone in the room. There's still like that same perception of, well, he's either going to make a right decision or a wrong decision. It's not uh, offsides. To be fair, at least they are definitive to an extent. I mean, they're still the how small the lines are. It's still, I think, it's still a joke. But at least you know if a lad's offside is offside. But there's there's penalty decisions that I mean, I mean the. The Spurs ones at the weekend, I just couldn't get my head around it. So like the Kane one, he has backed, it's clever from Kane. It's, he's gone into his man and at the end of the day, Lallana's just going to head the ball. He's not done anything. It's not a foul, but it's just Kane's made it look like it. Yeah, I know. And then, yeah, there's a diving on top of that as well, which seems to be... Like what, what did you think about the... Because you just did it then. You, you said Kane was clever, right? And I kind of agree with you, but when, when for Salah's run, the, the narrative around it was like, oh, he's, he's cheated, he's dived. Do you know what I mean? Uh, I don't know if it was like... No, I think they're both, no, I think they're both clever. Yeah, uh, yeah they're both They're both yeah. really clever. Like, yeah. but, I mean, Salah's one is a joke. The geese is planted his leg and then gone over. It's so... Bla but at the end of the day, I'm assuming that all players are now are told, well, if you don't get out, you don't get it. Surely that's like, like you were saying, the rough and tumble of, of like English football. Like, there has to be a kind of grey area where you still want people to be able to get stuck in. Yeah. and it not stop and start the game. It's, it's like when you talk about Harry Kane being clever and, and feeling the contact and stuff, for a centre-half, as the ball's coming into the box, you're being clever because if you hold your position and you put, pin the centre-forward, that's a defender being clever. Mm -hmm. But then all of a sudden the centre-forward falls over and it's like, well, now it's a foul. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? So, whereas the centre-forward can back into you, yeah. the centre-half wouldn't dare fall over because if it's yeah. not given, there's an opportunity to score. The benefit is in favour of, of the attacker all the time. Yeah. With modern defenders as well, all the emphasis is on playing it out from the back as well. So they have all these decisions going against them and they're under this pressure to be able to keep it at their feet and play it out. I mean, w what's your opinion on that? Some clubs, like Arsenal in particular, Arteta seems to absolutely be pushing that. Like they seem, nobody just wants to hoof it at this stage yeah. anymore. I mean, would you have struggled with that like in your day? Or I think it, 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 it's, good for, for certain teams, but everyone seems to do it, you know, and you have to be very careful about the profile of the centre-half that you have. If, if he's capable of doing it, well, great, but realise over the course of a season, you may let in four or five goals because of this, mm. and, and that can cost people their jobs and stuff like that, but if they're, if they're happy to stick to it, stick to it, but 
hundred percent, you should try and play out and you should try and keep possession, but you shouldn't do it at, at any risk to conceding goals. Yeah. If if there's a pass in between two players, which you've got eighty percent chance of making, don't try it. You know what I mean? It's but but the them coaches seem to f see the benefit of that. Well, let's take that risk. Let's try and get past that first line, and then yeah. and when it works, and we've seen it with Arsenal. And the, uh, the FA Cup uh, last year when they scored against Man City and they passed it through them. And so when it works, it's amazing. I think it worked for them against Liverpool this season, but I think it's it's a massive risk. Yeah, not, not for everyone. Do you feel like the art form of defending is almost being lost? So, say we always talk about fullbacks on this show quite a lot, and fullbacks now these days to the untrained eye are judged on basically how good they are going forward and crossing and stuff like that. And actually, it shows you can get to the top. You know, Trent unbelievable player but I feel like he's never really been tested as a defender. I mean you don't see many sliding tackles or blocks and different things like that and winning the ball and it's all about almost positional defending so we see what Liverpool now they're playing higher up the field so they're defending on the halfway line and it's basically they're just recovering balls rather than actual defending in one-on-one -on -one situations so there is a different style so if you, if you look at that that's your style well then you want someone who's quick and someone who can distribute the ball fast and then instead of someone who can win a header, someone who can block a shot, someone who can do different things and it's um, it's definitely changed the style of the style of defending and the style of defender that I imagine young coaches, young 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 players are are trying to develop and trying to become now. I was um y when you started you probably would have been overlapping with probably the end of some proper like old school players, some absolute characters like in the dressing room. I saw you talking about playing with Slavin Bilic. Uh, at Everton, right? Yeah. And did he have some? Uh, he had a couple of uh, interesting habits. Once was, wasn't he subbed off early? And did you find him? Was he smoking in the dressing room or something? Yeah, he, he did a few times. Yeah, he, he's he was amazing, Slavin, yeah. because he was. I think he was at West Ham before, and he he came to Everton for five million or something, which yeah. back then was was huge. And but again, it's it's all. It sounds like a theme of the show almost. It's about fitting into the right the right team and the way Everton was playing it probably wasn't you know but for him he had class and everything that you wanted from a from a centre half and mm -hmm. yeah he enjoyed a cigarette he enjoyed a beer and stuff like that but he was he was cool and I remember the Croatia beat us in the Euros in 2012 mm -hmm. and after the game as we all came into the dressing room and like you know, heads down he was the first one that came in and was just like high-fiving and saying come on lads good match keep yeah. your heads up keep going and he has that humility about him. He's a, he's a nice guy, and he, he loved football. He loved being a good footballer, but he didn't take it too seriously. You know, you, you can't get caught up. And I'm sure he was frustrated that he wasn't playing at Everton from time to time. But yeah. a little drink and a smoke will sort them out. So <laughs> <he's not> like <laughs> right, well, he can talk the talk, but can he still walk the walk? Betway have set Richard a keepy uppy challenge. So for every correct answer Richard gets, we'll add two seconds to his keepy uppy time limit. The goal is to get as many keepy uppies as possible, so the more time, the better. So the question I'm gonna ask you, okay, is, I need you to name as many of your former Man City teammates from the 08-09 season, so your last full season there, as possible in 90 seconds, okay? All right, you ready? Ready, you yeah. ready? okay, and go. Right, uh, Pablo Zabaleta. Yes. Um, Carluca, mm -hmm. Company, yep. Garrido, uh, yes. um, Alano, yes. Giovanni, uh, uh, no. No. Mm -hmm. Rubinho, yep. Martin Petrov, mm -hmm. Bojanov, yes. Benjani, yep. um, Darius Vassell, yep. uh, Michael Ball, yes. Mika Richards, yes. Maida Manua. Michael Johnson, Stephen Ireland, yeah. Chad Evans, yeah. Joe, yeah. Uh, good. Joe Hart, yes. Schmeichel, mm -hmm. uh, Isaacson, no, no. Um, Casido, yes. Felipe Casido, mm -hmm. um, Sean Roy Phillips, uh, yeah. There's another yeah. Irish man there. Oh yeah. Stephen Ar Shay Given? Yeah. Yeah. Um who else? Uh, Diddy Haman? Yeah. 
Jelson Fernandez. Ten seconds. Yes. Uh, that's not bad. This. You've done well. Samaras, no. No. Um, Time's up. All oh, right. There you go. As you can tell. <laughs> 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 All right. Good work. Good work. You did well. Let's see. That's good work. That yeah. Twenty-four. Twenty-four out of twenty-three. Yeah. So pretty. That's not that's nine names. What was it? What notable names? So you missed, oh, yeah, missed out. Craig Bellamy. Oh. Tal Ben Haim. Wayne Bridge. Nigel De Young. Uh, Kelvin Atuhu, uh, Glauber, um, Shalem mm -hmm. Logan, uh, Daniel Sturridge, oh. uh, Vladimir Weiss, and that's it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Not bad though. Not but bad, still, yeah. Bad. We've got yep. a football here. Premier League standard. Premier League standard football. <laughs> 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 no excuses. No balloons, no. <laughs> <laughs> Pick the right shoes for this? Absolutely not. <laughs> I don't think there is the right shoes though for this. <laughs> all right, all set. See. Okay. Probably all a right. false start. All right then. Three, two, one, go. <laughs> Feels like it's trying to do it on a dance floor. <laughs> Five seconds left. Time. All right. I think that was 68. Wow. Are you counting that good? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Somebody was. All right, well, congratulations, Richard. New, uh, new champion of the leaderboard, albeit uh, there's two on there. But still, <laughs> 68, 68, uh, keep you up, he's in the end. So uh, hard luck, Pascal. Maybe we'll get him back on and he can uh, give another go <laughs> sometime. Although at least he mixed it up between the feet as well. Pascal was very... Uh, I felt like I was in a nightclub doing yeah. all the <laughs> lights and the, and the dance yeah. floor and everything, so yeah. it was hard. Yeah, there's a lot going on here. <laughs> Keep your eyes peeled for our bonus video this week where we will preview the Man City versus Liverpool match with Richard in the studio. And after the Ireland match, I mean, I have to ask you about Republic of Ireland at some stage. It'd be a missed opportunity there. <laughs> but I think in my mind, you, you played with Ireland through like a really, like a, a golden period of players, like players like Roy Keane, Robbie Keane, Damien Duff, Ian Hart, Steve Finnan, Shea Gavin. Would you, and obviously like as an Ireland fan, like at the tournaments, like you have a great attitude, great atmosphere, but do you ever feel like they could have achieved a little bit more with that, that squad? Um, possibly, yeah. I mean, I mean, the big one was the, the World Cup in 2002. Um, mm, yeah. Because we were in a, a qualifying group with Holland and Portugal, which was a difficult one to, to get out of to start with. And we got out of it really well. You know, mm. we, we performed really well. And then you go there and the night that we got knocked out, we got knocked out by Spain. We completely destroyed them and battered them. And I remember Dave, Damien Duff turning and play all inside out and uh, unbelievable mm. performance, but you lose on penalties. And it's like, well, could we have done any more? And I don't know, but if we had to got through that, I think the next game was South Korea or something like that. Yeah. And it was like the opportunity would have been there, but it wasn't for the lack of the lack of trying because we gave everything. We just mm. got beat on penalties as, as can happen. Mm -hmm. After that, there was, there was missed opportunities in terms of qualifying and, and different things like that. But when we got to Euro 2012, we were maybe a little bit over the hill. We were starting to, yeah. to come towards the ends of our international careers and different things like that. And the disappointment within that was the fact that we missed out on the 2010 World Cup when we were performing well. We were we weren't conceding goals, we were winning games, we were all sort of playing regularly in the Premier League and we were all 28, 29 in a really good good shape and, and, and yeah, looking forward to it. But then obviously it didn't happen. So we would have loved to go to more tournaments and, and play in some bigger games. But yeah, it's, it's tantalising. Like you talk about the 2002 World Cup, like getting so close. And obviously like a big story from 2002 was, was Roy Keane's departure from the squad. But for you in the camp, did, did you just get on with it? Or did you even, was that all aside from the rest of the squad? Or did it affect you at all? 
I don't, I don't know of a, had a huge effect on mm. the players. It, obviously, it's, it's a moment and a half in the moment. Everyone's, wow, what's going to happen? And uh, obviously, Roy Keane's mm. was probably the best midfielder in Europe at the time, you know. Mm. So it is going to take an effect on the on the performances on the pitch. But if he's not there, he's not there. There's nothing you can do. So you carry on. You play as best you can. And the players that came in and played in his place had, had brilliant World Cups and done great. And him playing against Spain would it have made any more of a difference, you know. It's not like we went down, we got dominated and we lost 3-0, we, we got close and it was, um, yeah, it's disappointment but it's it's one of those things, it's every day in, in, in training and in teams, every weekend, oh, he can't play this weekend because he's fallen out with the manager or he's injured or whatever, so that was one of those situations where he came left, mm. right, big news, big news, everyone else wants to speak about it but We've got games to play, and that's the, what it is. Of course, get on with the job. A hell of a matchup there, isn't it? Keane v Mick McCarthy. <laughs> Jesus, I, I, I can't even imagine what that's like seeing them two square off each other. Jesus, what was what was Keno like? I mean, he, obviously, so much he's talked about his kind of off the pitch in terms of mentality and just you know tough attitude and stuff like that. I mean, what were your kind of relationship with him? How did did you get on with him? I didn't really speak to him. I don't. I don't. I wouldn't. And I know him or, or anything like that. We yeah. were played against, played with and against each other a, a few times and and stuff like that. But I remember, sort of my first competitive international was we were away in Amsterdam. We played Holland, and we went two 0 up and we drew the game two all. And they scored in the last minute. I think Van Bronckhorst smashed one in the top corner. And for the last fifteen minutes, we were starting to take a little bit of pressure. And it was difficult, and it was like hanging on and then they ended up they scored right towards the end so it was like take that sort of as a decent result and he was fuming right he wasn't happy we didn't we didn't want to be praised because we we threw away a two goal lead and stuff like that and the mentality of his was you get into this thing where it's like well it's Ireland versus Holland well it doesn't really matter because it's just 11 against them 11 and for the majority of the game we were better we gave ourselves a great opportunity and we let ourselves down because you're not taking it and mm. followed it through and that's why he was captain of Man United, he was leading them to all sorts of trophies because he had that belief in him and that was something that stood out for me about him was don't accept drawing with Holland or don't accept going away and drawing with Portugal, win, go and win and, and that's what he wanted and you could see it in his career and the success that he had is, is down to having that sort of mentality. That's how I know I'd never be able to make it. I'd be well chuffed with the points. <laughs> <laughs> I'd be dancing around in the dressing room. Yeah, that's the I've not got the, that elite mentality. And it's something these lads hasten to remind me about in the past um, is Henri's handball, obviously, uh, which I mean, if which is frustrating enough for me as a fan, but for you, somebody who was there who played in that match, I mean, how do you look back on that moment now? Is it just kind of in the past and forgotten about, or does it still rankle? It's a difficult one because I never, I don't wake up in the morning and go, oh, <laughs> stuff like that. I do. Yeah. On me on the dartboard. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, a little pin in your dog. <laughs> it's 20 years ago or something like that, so it's not, it's not a thing, but it, I get asked it a lot. And it's, the, I suppose the more you get asked, the more you reflect on it and you think, well, and the biggest sort of disappointment is what I spoke about earlier in terms of in 2010 at the World Cup, we, we would have had a really good side who were at a really good age and we probably would have competed a lot better than what the French team did when they got there and they ended up falling out with one another and, and all that sort of stuff. So the first leg of the game was disappointing because we got beat in Dublin when we didn't have the same sort of freedom that we played with in, in mm. Paris and maybe if we had played better on that night it might have been a different story and there's many different reasons why we didn't qualify, not just the handball. So, As a like fellow professional, are you, are you more annoyed that like the Henri decided to do that or that the refs didn't see it if it's at the other end if you'd qualified via Robbie Keane or say yeah. doing the similar thing would we would is that just that's part of the game and it's the referee has to it is part of the game and it, it it's down to the referee and it's like what we spoke about earlier it's like Harry Kane did he need to go down Salah did he need to go down it's the same thing it's like did he, he didn't need to handle it but he did it and he took an advantage for for his team and 100% if Robbie Kane or Damien Duff or someone else had done something like that at the other end, they'd be a god <laughs> in Top Ireland. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You know, so yeah, it's, yeah. it's one of those things, you, you feel cheated when it's against you, but if it's for you, it's, ah, I didn't see it. You know, it's <laughs> yeah. Fine. Yeah. Did, did you have a word with him after the game? Did you speak? He came and sat down beside me and told me that he handled it and it was like, 
I don't. Well, I mean, what are you telling me for? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, thanks, mate. Yeah. 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 Just just the the By the way, I did see, yeah. 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 see that little. Yeah. 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 Tell me, tell the ref, yeah. he's right over there. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's all from us this week, folks. Thank you for joining us on another episode of Dream Team Coach TV, brought to you by Betway. Uh, keep your eyes peeled for our big weekend preview, also with Richard here in the studio, where we will be talking about the Man City versus Liverpool match this coming weekend. But until then, take care. <laughs>